Hello everybody, hope you're all well. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to a brand new video. I'm back with a very exciting one for you today. I am back on my travels and I am on a cruise. This is my second ever cruise, so I'm so excited to be taking you on another cruise with me. I'll link the first cruise that I did in the description box. But I find cruises fascinating. There's something that I want to dip my toe into a little bit more, so I have booked myself onto a two-night cruise from Southampton in England, UK, across to Hamburg in Germany. And I thought I would take you with me. I thought I would show you around the ship. I thought I would show you all the different things on board, all the entertainment, the food, what it's like. I'm on the Queen Mary 2 with Cunard. It's not actually a cruise ship. So the RMS Queen Mary 2 is a British transatlantic ocean liner and she has served as the flagship of Cunard Line since succeeding Queen Elizabeth II in 2004. And as of 2023, Queen Mary 2 is the only ocean liner in service. There's absolutely loads to see and do. I'll be giving you a full tour of the stateroom. I'll be showing you all of the entertainment, all of the food, all of the different things you can do on board. There's loads of really interesting facts as well as we go around, lots of historical things. It's fascinating. So I'm going to take you around for a really thorough look to give you an overview of what it is like if you're considering booking yourself onto a cruise on the Queen Mary 2 as well. The Queen Mary 2 is obviously famous for crossing to New York and back. As I say, this is a much shorter one. It's a two night cruise and I'm on a little break with my partner. So the prices that I share with you are based on two sharing. And I will be sharing the price with you at the end of the video. So do stay tuned for that. I think it may surprise you. So in terms of getting to Southampton, I took the train down. It was really easy from Clapham Junction Station in London. You can also take the train from Waterloo, really central in London. Very easy to get to Southampton by train. And I also thought it'd be a good idea to overnight just so that I don't know, just in case of any delays and stuff, but you could easily come down in the morning. The time to embark was 1.30 p.m., so there would have been time to get the train in the morning, but I just thought it'd be nice to do a little overnight in Southampton. And there's lots of things to see and do in Southampton itself. There's lots of shops, there's a brand new shopping center, there's lots of nice restaurants and things, and also some history to look at too. So if you have got a bit of time, well worth a little look around the center there. I booked the travel lodge, which was just under 50 pounds for the night. And then took a taxi from the Travelodge Central to the cruise terminal, which took about 10 minutes or so, and it was around six or seven pounds. Embarking was really straightforward. Is it embarking? I'm getting familiar with all the cruise terminology, so you'll have to forgive me if I say any of the wrong words for different things. I am new to this. But embarking, which is obviously the equivalent of boarding a plane, so getting on the ship, was very straightforward. Um, there was loads and loads of staff, very friendly staff, at the cruise terminal. I don't even know if it's called a terminal. You'll have to correct me in the comments if I'm wrong. <laughs> but it was very straightforward, um, just a case of scanning the passport and the boarding pass. And security was very easy. You can bring full-sized toiletries on board, in case you didn't already know that, which is fab. You also are allowed to bring as much luggage as you like, um, with the exception of the weight per bag. I think it's up to like 20 kilograms, but I thought that was very impressive. So if you are somebody that likes to glam up for a cruise, you could bring loads of different outfits and be spoiled for choice. I did pack quite lightly because rather than um, giving my luggage to be taken on board for me and being delivered to the stateroom, I thought it'd be actually um, just quicker and more efficient to take luggage with me, um, which is what I did. So I just had a very small wheelie suitcase and another bag, um, purely because I just thought it'd be quicker, get straight to the stateroom to unpack. Um, and yeah, they say to arrive um, at your designated time, which for us was 1.30. Um, I got there a little bit early and that was no problem at all. So I was actually on board the ship by 1 p.m. So very, very straightforward, very smooth and a really nice relaxing start to the journey. One thing that I was comparing it to a little bit was going to the airport and getting a flight. And although it's obviously a very different experience, kind of things like going through security and all that was kind of reminding me of that a little bit, but this feels so much more relaxed. And it's just amazing before you know it, you're on board, you're in your stateroom, you're ready to unpack 
and you can just go and get some food, you can go and relax. So I did start off with a tour of the stateroom for you. I wanted to show you it before it gets messy to show you what it's like when you arrive. And this is a sheltered balcony stateroom um, on the sixth deck. And as I say, I'll share all of the prices at the end of the video. Let's jump into a tour of the stateroom and I'll meet you back here. So when you arrive, your key is waiting for you on here in a little envelope and then in we go. So this room is situated on deck six. Just show you here where we are on the ship. And then as we go in, we have the wardrobe and drawers on the right. Lots of space in here. Shoved all the luggage in there just to show you around while the room is tidy. And then we have a decent sized safe. The life jackets are up here, some shelves and plenty of drawers. So you've got loads of space to put all of your cruising clothes and outfits away and loads of hangers in here too and yeah plenty of space down there for suitcases then we have a nice full length mirror here and then into the bathrooms we have a lovely big shower here I mean really spacious considering and then we have the sink area there's some storage underneath the toilet is here and we have Penn Halligan's one of my favorite brands um, soap and also we have the shampoo hand and body lotion and the bath and shower gel in Quirkus which is such a beautiful fragrance and some cotton buds in here and some cotton wool balls and a couple of glasses a couple of um, soap dishes and yeah it is just lovely nice big mirror too with the light above very cozy lots of towels provided plenty of towels and some um, rails here that you can hang those up with. And there's also a couple of hooks on the door, which is always handy for when you're getting showered. And then let's go through into the main space here. So we have this beautiful big bed, as you can see, with bedside tables and these glorious lamps either side. We have the Cunard um, branding on the bed here. This is a nice touch just so you can put your suitcases straight down on the bed to unpack without getting the bedding dirty but how lovely is all of this so luxurious and the pillows feel lovely and soft I've given it the squish test i think this is going to be very comfortable indeed really like the kind of padded headboard and the mirrors above and then as we go round, you have your tv here with the safety briefing on screen as you arrive and you have to go to your assembly station before you set sail so you know where to go in case of an emergency and then through to this lovely area here another bedside table i've just put my bag down here the sun is streaming in we have sunshine in southampton on this october day love the artwork on the wall it is so classy isn't it and then we have this really nice little coffee table desk area here with lots of information. You have your voyage guide, stateroom, bar and dining. We have some information about the different restaurants on board. We have a little drawer here and then we have a kettle. I know that will please lots of you. So you can make tea and coffee in the room with some whole milk here and also um, some tea bags. We have some peppermint and some English breakfast and some coffees. And then you also have a fridge in the room, which is perfect. You can bring one bottle of wine per person on board with you. And then we have a lovely bottle of fizz that is provided in the room and a couple of chilled glasses waiting for when we set sail. So really handy to have the fridge. And then we have a little drawer here with the hairdryer inside. And then they are doing a promotion on board. So for 90 US dollars per day, you can go for the all-inclusive drinks. So yeah, you can enjoy beers, wine, spirits, cocktails up to $13.50 per serving, and all the um, premium soft drinks as well. I'm not gonna go for this option purely because um, we have a couple of bottles of wine that we bought on board with us, and actually the drinks prices are kind of just like London drinks prices, so any drinks that I do want, I can just buy at the bar and pay as I go. I don't think I'll be spending that much per day on drinks, but if you want to, the option is there. Another lovely mirror here. So if you're getting ready in the evening, you have a nice spot to get ready with all the plugs in front. We have the um, 
British plugs here and then we have some other um, sockets too. And we have a phone as well if you need to phone for anything to make any reservations, that is there too. And then out to the balcony. So this is one of the um, sheltered balconies, as you can see. And this is delightful, isn't it? So we have these two chairs and a little table. And then you can just kind of lean on here and look out to the sea and take in all the views. Just immediately you feel so relaxed on board. So after unpacking, it was a case of just going to explore the ship and it was a sunny day in Southampton. So there is sun loungers all around and one of the top decks so you can just relax in the sunshine, which is exactly what I did until the rain came in. So the bad weather has come to the UK. There is storms in the UK and I think also in Germany too. So the weather did change quite rapidly. So it was really nice to enjoy that bit of sunshine while it lasted. And at around 5 p.m. it was time to set sail. So unfortunately due to the wet weather, the set sail party that was planned around the pool was canceled. That did not stop me from getting getting outside and taking in the views of Southampton as we left the port and it was so much fun just waving to the other cruise ships and to the passengers on those and just taking in all the scenery despite a little bit of drizzle. About to leave, already packing, come with me, I'm not really asking, we'll get away to a place where we don't know. Then last night dinner was in the Britannia restaurant, which is kind of like, I guess your classic kind of fancy cruise restaurant, the kind of more traditional one. It was an incredible five course meal, really delicious food, really lovely service and yeah, just a really nice atmospheric space. I thought it might be really noisy in there because of the amount of people in there, but actually the acoustics were really good. It had a really nice ambiance to it, and yeah, it was just fabulous. I had a little look at the crockery, which is Wedgwood. It was really nice, like, silverware. In terms of drinks, we didn't go for the drinks package. There is a huge wine list. Wines from all over the world are available, so I'm sure your favourite tipple may well be available in the restaurant. Um, we went for a bottle of Prosecco. It was lovely. Didn't finish it at the restaurant, but they did let us fill up our glasses to take with us to the theatre, where there was a fantastic performance, which I thoroughly enjoyed. It was 1920s theme. <laughs> Nineteen twenties is the kind of theme they're given for this cruise. So for anybody that wants to kind of dress up nineteen twenties, that's also encouraged, which is really fun. I saw lots of people with kind of feathers and the nineteen twenties outfits. So it's a really fun atmosphere in the evenings. I think these cruises are famous for the kind of sophisticated glitz and glam dressing up, kind of slightly old fashioned. But I would say it's definitely not stuffy. It's really good fun. Um, it's a very relaxed atmosphere. And although I'm wearing a jacket today, um, I'm just wearing this because it's drizzly and <laughs> I just fancied wearing it. But throughout the day, um, it's a very relaxed atmosphere. So, you know, you can go around in a shirt or a top, whatever you want to do. Um, there's a few rules to stick by, but they're just the standard kind of no sportswear or no swimwear in kind of like eating areas after 6 p.m. It switches up to a slightly more formal dress, but there are areas where you can be more relaxed and more casual should you wish to be. And formal does include, I think for gentlemen, a collared shirt in some of the restaurants. And I think even dark jeans are probably acceptable. I'd have to double check that, but it's not um, super kind of black tie, um, tuxedo vibes if you don't want to. But I will be dressing up later on this evening so I just thought it would be good fun too so I have bought another suit with me for later on this evening which is the gala night. So I realise this is going to be quite a long vlog so do click subscribe if you haven't done so already. You can always add this to your watch later list if you don't watch all of it in one go. But I just want to make this video as informative as possible for any of you that are considering booking onto the Queen Mary 2. So I think I'll just take you around with me today. I thought we would start off with a proper look around. There is so much to see, as I say, so much history. 
So we'll just go for a little wander. I'll take you with me and show you everything that's on board. Oh, and in terms of breakfast this morning, I went for breakfast in bed, which was so lovely. Breakfast in bed is included as is room service. And last night, after the entertainment, and after enjoying a bit of late night shopping on board, a little wander around, I went back outside, took in the stars and the scenery. There was a bit of room service involved last night as well. It's all included in the package. So yeah, club sandwich burger, warm brownie with ice cream situation was absolutely spot on. And then this morning, breakfast in bed. You can order your breakfast in your room the night before they leave you a card, so you just tick what you want and you can have fresh juices, fresh coffee, cooked breakfast, pastries, um, meat slices, cheeses, all that kind of stuff. They've also got all the cereals and toast and jam. So really luxurious and a real treat just to have it in the room. I quite like having breakfast in the room sometimes, especially when you can just open up the doors and take in the sea. So today is a sea day, having departed from Southampton yesterday. We are now just going alongside kind of Amsterdam kind of thing, so that's roughly where we are at the moment. All of these magazines were free as you um, got on the ship. There was a stand with lots and lots of different magazines. I've picked up Good Housekeeping, Country Life and OK Magazine to have a little flick through. Lovely spot here just to flick through a magazine or sit out there when the sun is shining. So this is what the corridors look like to the staterooms here on deck six. And then you come out to the stairway on the walls here, you'll always have um, a little map showing you whereabouts you are situated. So at the moment we're on stairway C, as you can see, on deck six, and it shows you where everything is. There is a lot to see. So just one level up is the King's Court food area, so you can, a place where you can get food throughout the day. Um, I think it goes on till like 11 p.m. at night. I love the fact that there's different paintings and artworks on the stairs as you go up. So in here you can help yourself to different juices. They have lemonade, orange juice, cranberry juice, they have water and ice. Quite a relaxed dining area here. So from King's Court out onto Deck 7, you have the sun lounges here where you can sit and relax, take in the sea views, take in the scenery as um, you're coming into a port. Of course it is a little bit windy and rainy today, but nevertheless, lovely to get out here to get some sea air. You can see the lifeboats above me here as we walk through. There is lots of clocks as we go around, I've noticed. The time did actually change last night, so the clocks went forward by one hour. My phone did update automatically, but there were announcements from the captain also within the stateroom to remind you to change your clock. There's a sign here that explains how far you can walk. If you want to do three laps around the ship, it's 1.1 miles and two laps is 1.1 kilometers. As you can see, it is a little bit wet underfoot. And I'm sure some of you will want to know whether you can feel the movement of the ship on the water and you can feel it a little bit, um, especially on a choppy day like today. And through in here is the fitness center, which has a really nice selection of equipment. As you can see, there's loads of running machines and from here you can get a really nice view out to the front. Next to the fitness center is the spa area. And here we can step out and here we have what looks like some kind of sculptures or artworks. These are actually spare propellers. How fabulous is that? Great spot for a photograph. We can get right to the front here. You'd have to go just over there, wouldn't you, if you wanted to have your Kate Winslet moment. <laughs> your Titanic moment. And then from out here, you can see all the way up. So we'll go and have a look up there shortly. Here you can get a better view of the lifeboats up above there. And you can see above here, we have all the staterooms with balconies. Now there's a very cool lift just in here. How cool is this lift? Is this gonna take yeah. us? 
up to eight where the library is situated. So the library is full of these beautiful cabinets with loads of books and you can borrow up to two books per person, per passenger, whilst you are here. They also have a book swap, which I always love to see. Great place to drop off any books that you've finished on your cruise and pick up some new ones to read. There's also desk areas where you can log onto the internet. This is my section here. We have the arts and crafts. Hey. <laughs> they also have a selection of magazines. Look who I've spotted. There's our Steph. We also have a bookshop. Thank you. You can purchase quite a wide range of books in here. There's Zoe. <laughs> and they've also got puzzles, games, they've got Lego. I think kids would absolutely love this shop. Oh, look at these. They do have some fridge magnets. I'm not sure if they do other ones. I might hold off and see if I can find a slightly more interesting one, although these are very classic. <laughs> I want one that actually says the um, Queen Mary 2 on it. That's quite cool, this key ring. So we have the 180 years of Cunard here, and also um, the Titanic story. They also have the story of the Titanic for children. That looks like a nice book. Love the designs on the carpets and also on the lifts here. We're now on deck nine and heading into the Commodore Club. A relaxing space for a drink. And this is the boardroom. It's just situated off the Commodore Club. Maybe this is where important meetings happen. There's also a cigar lounge. So this is now deck 11, it's very windy. <laughs> and we have the observation deck up here. So you can see right the way out from up here, fantastic view. Now this is kind of fun on deck 11 because situated behind the toilets, we do actually have another space. The Atlantic Room. This is where you can come to play a game of bridge if you fancy it. If you're a fan of paintings and artwork you will be spoiled here because there are paintings on every staircase. This one's called Firework. So here on deck 12, you have the bridge, which is open for viewing. So you can see the captain. There's like a glass area where you can see through to the captain. You can see all the controls, all the kind of machinery. It's very fascinating, but sadly no cameras are allowed. So definitely something to come and have a look at for yourself if you ever come on board the Queen Mary 2. And we've reached the top. So we're now at deck 13 and heading out to the lookout. 
So here we are up top at the lookout. It's very blustery. As you can see, we're right at the top of the ship here. So lots of activities up here. As you can see, there's people playing over here. We also have um, some golf here. We have people playing the shuffleboard here. Here there is an indoor pool. It looks like it's being cleaned at the moment and also table tennis and a pool bar and up here you get the fabulous view of the queen mary to sign a great spot for photographs now did you know that there is kennels on board so many people will travel with their dogs with their furry friends and access is for pet owners only but i have spotted a few gorgeous pups just beyond the glass here and over here you'll see there is a fire hydrant and even a lamp post to make the dogs feel extra at home in case well you know in case they want to cock their leg <laughs> So from here, you can go down to the pool, the deck. So this is a fantastic spot for sunbathing. You have a whirlpool up here. Beyond, you can see where the swimming pool is. It's closed today. That was open yesterday. Down here, you have the terrace pool bar. And then there's a, another pool down here as well so loads and loads of choice i think they're all closed for cleaning today i presume as it's the last day this is the corinthia lounge this is a nice relaxed space for a drink they also have the hobby corner in here where if you're a keen crafter you could bring your crafts and mix with other fellow crafters situated outside the golden lion pub is this post box the traditional red british post box i'm guessing you probably can postcards in there i'm not sure so it's time for lunch in the golden lion pub which is kind of a traditional english pub and they serve some really traditional dishes as well so there's things like fish and chips there's plowmen there's meat pies vegetarian pies as you can hear there is a pianist playing at the moment so throughout the day there may be a pianist playing in here too and also there is cunard beers so i've ordered a flight of the cunard beers to try so this is the taste flight so this is a supplementary cost this cost seven US dollars and by the way everything's priced in US dollars if you do pay for anything in additional to um, your cruise so we have a light Pilsner here we have an IPA and then we have this dark this is more like a kind of coffee flavor to it and yeah looking forward to trying three for the price of one <laughs> this all like, equates to one pint just in case you're thinking that looks like i've got three pints in front of me so they're kind of three thirds but the food in the golden lion is all part of your cruise including desserts traditional sticky toffee pudding and a fruit cumble with custard and cream so cheers everybody my first beer aboard the queen mary too Well, lunch was delicious. Now, did you know that the Queen Mary 2 is home to the world's largest planetarium at sea? And that's where we're heading now. With the afternoon tea, it's advisable to get to the Queen's room nice and early because it was very busy in there. So if it is full, you will be sent to um, the Britannia restaurant to have your afternoon tea there instead. So yeah, worth getting there early if you want to have it in the Queen's room. Another must see is this Walk of Fame. All these famous faces that have been 
On board we have Laurel and Hardy up here, Elizabeth Taylor and her dog, Ginger Rogers. And then we have this rather peaceful corridor here where you can get a really good view of the ocean. We're quite low here, so yeah, this is on deck three. At the Grand Lobby, we have the Queen Mary ship's bell here. And as you can see, it's dated 2003. There is a duty-free shop on board if you want to buy some spirits. These are all situated around the main lobby. So we have another duty-free here with lots of fragrances and cosmetics, watches. They also stock lots of evening attire on board in case you wanted to pick up anything for the gala evening, as well as lots of familiar favorites and essentials. And where you can also pick up the famous Cunard there in his little life jacket. They even have a Liberties on board. Also at the main lobby is this fantastic portrait of Her Majesty the Queen by Gail Graham. And situated here is the Champagne Bar the Laurent Perrier Champagne Bar. In the centre of the Grand Lobby we have this incredible display created with flowers and peacock feathers. We've got some facts and figures here about the Queen Mary II. So the first voyage was the 12th of January 2004. It has a guest capacity of 2,691 with 13 decks and there's a crew of 1,292 people. Now something really fun to look out for at this panel which is on the starboard side it's outside the Golden Lion pub and as you can see we have the American theme on this panel Statue of Liberty there. Lots is going on here but if you look really closely and I mean really closely you will find Homer Simpson himself. Look how tiny he is next to my finger. So yeah, not many people know about that. So if you come on board, you must have a little search for him. And he's quite tricky to find. Well, the sun has come back out for the afternoon. So I'm back out on the deck, just enjoying the sea view and the remainder of this afternoon, this evening's sunshine. Dinner is reserved quite early again this evening, 6 p.m. So you can choose different times that you want to eat. We have opted for an early dinner reservation. And tonight's the gala night as well. So we're getting dressed up shortly, ready to head out for the evening. Out for the evening, kind of in for the evening, isn't it? But who knows when you're on a cruise. But anyway, this is the view. Enjoy it, sit back, relax, and I hope you enjoy the rest of this vlog and our gala evening tonight. Okay, it is a little bit later on. I'm all suited and booted, ready for the gala evening. I'm gonna go and take some pictures up on the top deck while the light is so lovely outside. But yeah, I'm feeling very smart. I've got my suit and dicky bow tie on. And yeah, just need to pop a little bit of fragrance on. I've got a nice Tom Ford one with me that I'm gonna pop on. It's the Tom Ford Black Orchid. Okay, let's go.
there's a different menu on tonight so as you can see here we have this selection of appetizers to choose from then there's salads and soups and then for the dinner there's actually a fillet of beef wellington i'm going to definitely go for that i've been fancying that dinner for such a long time and then there's also um, a selection of desserts to choose from or cheese and biscuits A lovely evening. There's such an incredible atmosphere on board tonight. Everybody's enjoying themselves and although it's been formal dress, formal attire, it has felt very relaxed, very fun. I've thoroughly enjoyed myself. But it's time for an early night because tomorrow we disembark at just before 8am I think it is and then there's a transfer to Hamburg station. So um, yes, it will be an early night and an early start tomorrow. So I will see you tomorrow. Good morning from Hamburg. Good morning, it is 18 minutes past seven. I've just been for a delicious breakfast. It's still dark outside and we're here in Hamburg now, it is time to almost disembark, but just before we do, I thought I would round up this vlog with the price that I promised you and just some final thoughts. So first of all, let's start with the price. So the price of this trip was £279 per person, and that was for two nights departing from Southampton to Hamburg with a sheltered balcony stateroom. I think there was some cheaper um, options available, I think with interior cabins and that sort of thing, and then, yeah, I think the price is just um, varied, but also some were sold out too, so um, it's worth keeping that in mind if you're having a look um, for yourself. I'm just having a little look at my booking confirmation. So on here it has my um, dinner request. So I requested the first sitting, which is why um, we were eating early at kind of just 6 to 6.15 p.m. So you are able to kind of um, request those when you book. It says here table size, requested not confirmed. I can't remember what I requested for table size. <laughs> table for two. <laughs> there were some big round tables in the dining space. So maybe it's to do with that. Maybe if you're in a group, you could request to um, all sit together. So yeah, that is what it cost. Um, £279 per person, so a total of £558 for two. And then there were a few additional costs. I'll just whiz through those in case you're interested because there are obviously um, other bits and pieces that you may have to buy on board to factor in. It would be completely possible to um, come on this trip just having paid that. You definitely have an amazing time with everything that's included. However, a few extra costs. Um, so at the Britannia restaurant, there is a couple of $48. Those are for bottles of Prosecco. Um, in the restaurant, I think those were around $41. And then with like the service on there as well. Um, internet time, so I paid $30. It was $15 per day for a basic internet package, which kind of is just enough to use things like WhatsApp, Instagram, that kind of thing. But you pay a bit more if you want high speed browsing, if you're wanting to watch anything on your device. Um, there was service charge. Now, this is something I didn't realize and I didn't factor in. So, a service charge was charged each time food was ordered to the room. So, breakfast in bed and also the late night room service each had a charge of 29 us dollars so there was a couple of those added kind of worth it though i mean i would kind of recommend um having the breakfast in bed you can also order the afternoon tea to your room which i think would be a lovely thing to do if you were having a sea day 
and you had a balcony so you could just sit and have it in your room I think that would be really really nice um, but obviously there's plenty of other options on board to go and have afternoon tea um, I've booked a transfer to Hamburg train station on the coach this morning at 10 US dollars per person which I think is pretty reasonable and yeah I think that will just make it a lot more straightforward than queuing up for a taxi and then there was $16.10 at the Golden Lion that was for um, a couple of flights of those beers and I think that that is it. The additional cost came in at 220 US dollars, so 181 pounds. So I hope that's useful to give you a bit of an idea of kind of the additional spending and how that can add up. But yeah, I think overall really reasonable, really good value for money. Um, very, very impressed. I feel like for this kind of experience, that price point is incredible. And for that kind of luxury dining, luxury experience, um, lovely stateroom to stay in, all the activities that you have on board, the access to the different pools, so much to do. I think it's incredible good value in terms of kind of like the atmosphere on board as well. Um, just to quickly touch on that, so this cruise does have a reputation for being quite formal, quite posh. If that's something that's putting you off, I would say definitely don't let that put you off. Um, it felt very relaxed, didn't feel stuffy or snobby or anything like that. It is formal in some respects, but I think in a good way. I think it's really nice that they're keeping those traditions going and those kind of nods to the past and there's so much history on board as well. I feel like if you're interested in the history of things like ocean liners and travel you will absolutely love it on board the Queen Mary 2 because there's so much history everywhere. There's so many amazing paintings, bits of memorabilia and um, different stories on the Walk of Fame where you've got all the um, Hollywood stars that have been on board so much to see and do. I feel like I've only just scratched the surface having been on board for two nights. So I definitely want to do another cruise on board the Queen Mary 2 again in the future, maybe to somewhere different. I have been having a look at the itinerary and it's incredible to see where it goes and yeah, do have a look for yourself because you can do anything from two nights from Southampton to Hamburg to some mini cruises. I think there's like a three night mini cruise that's a round trip from Southampton that could be really good. There's also round the world cruises too um yeah they go on for like three months it's incredible and actually there's people on board today that have been on board for i think a month or just over a month i think maybe 32 days and i think they started in canada and then came down to um, new york and then across to southampton yeah i found that really interesting i do want to geek out and study the plans of the entire cruise liner and just see what some of the rooms are that I haven't kind of managed to see. There were some quite large looking cabins down on I think it was deck three that I'm intrigued about and yes yeah, so I'll be having a look at the floor plan at some point. Um, but yeah I hope you found this video useful. If you did do give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions you can always pop them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them and I'll leave a link to Cunard as well so you can check them out for yourself. I got my deal through I think it was C Scanner. I think I used. Um, I'm not sure if that works out cheaper booking through them but I was just looking at various different cruise options from Southampton as a starting point. Um, so yeah let me know um, what you think of the video. I hope it was useful to you as I say. Do subscribe if you're new here for brand new videos every single week. I do post quite a lot of travel videos throughout the year whenever I get the chance to get away I will always try and bring you with me and I am hoping to go on more cruises in the future if that's your kind of thing then definitely subscribe and stick around. And yeah if you're going on a cruise yourself soon happy cruising. If you're going on the Queen Mary 2 or if you've been on the Queen Mary 2 already do let me know how you got on in the comments. I would love to hear any hints and tips that you might have for me and yeah that's it thank you so much for watching and i will see you very soon bye